We're back. If you didn't watch the first video already, this is a freeze Facebook authentication example. In the first video, I showed you how to get this thing set up and running. We created a fake uh, Facebook application, and now we're going to open up the debugger and we're going to see what's going on with this thing. So I'm already logged in. This is right where we left off. Uh, I'm logged in here. Uh, let's open up the debugger. This is Chrome's debugger. I'm going to go to the Sources tab. And uh, we've got Facebook JS open already, which is cool. I'm going to open up one other file called AuthJS. And I'm going to set a bunch of breakpoints here. OK, now some of this code was uh, provided by Facebook, a little bit of it. Uh, and that part of it that was provided by Facebook is basically this stuff inside Facebook.js. Now here's what happens when you, uh, when you log into Facebook, or when um, every time you refresh this page, it's going to contact Facebook again and see that they have permission to do all this stuff. Now, this thing down here at the very bottom is what kind of starts the whole process. It's this, this code is just provided by Facebook. I didn't write it. Um, and what this does is it loads the Facebook libraries from their servers, and then it calls window.fbasyncinit. This is like a hard-coded uh, function name that you have to implement. And Facebook's library, after it's done doing its thing, and it says, OK, you get to do your thing now, it calls this function. Now this function um, expects you to do an init call. So you need to init the library and this is where you provide uh, the Facebook app ID and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, okay, so when we run, I'm going to set a debugger at the beginning of these functions. And I'm going to refresh the page. Okay, so we can see right here, this has got called. This actually would have just gotten called automatically, but when I uh, step over it. We're now in uh, Facebook async init and uh, we're going down here initializing everything. Now this one is a key here, uh, event subscribe. What I'm doing is subscribing to a Facebook event, auth dot auth response change. What that means is that if uh, a user's login status changes, uh, you receive an event. I subscribe to that and I've uh, said the handler for that function is Facebook on auth response change. That's uh, right up here at the very top. So let's set a breakpoint there too. Now, um, I could step through this uh, one by one at a time, but I'm going to go ahead and hit run. And the next part of the code that's going to get hit is going to be that uh, on auth response. There we go. We got a response back from Facebook. And what I'm doing here now, now we're in uh, code that I've written. So this is no longer Facebook code. OK, so now this function is going to actually respond to events uh, intermittently. You'll notice when your app is open that this event will just fire once in a while. Facebook will fire it. Um, I'm not aware that my um, auth response status is changing uh, on Facebook, but apparently something's happening because it will fire this once in a while. Um, and so what we do is on the page, we check to see if you've logged in already. Um, and if you have logged in already, then we just say, hey, you've already logged in. We don't make all these further calls to Facebook and all this kind of stuff. Uh, what's going to happen is we're going to keep basically uh, firing, uh, receiving events from Facebook, uh, having responders fire and such. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the login status from the Facebook API. And that accepts a parameter, which is the callback function for that. So I've given that one the Facebook dot on get login status and that one's down here so we need to set another breakpoint down there we'll hit the uh, resume button and Facebook got the login status and then it returned back to us uh, so we now have a login response and this login response is where it first starts to get interesting so basically Facebook has sent us a, um, a response back from their server telling us what the status of the user is and uh, whether or not this uh, person is connected. So then what we do is we actually do an AJAX call, a local AJAX call to our local server, and I'm hitting an endpoint called Facebook login. And what I'm passing in is I'm passing in this parameter, login response, auth response, signed request. Now this is a very interesting piece of uh, data right here. In fact, this is the key to the security. The first part is a signature. And the second part is Base64 encoded data. So we're going to take this signed request. This contains a signature and data. And we're going to pass it through to the server. 
and the server is going to verify that that stuff uh, is correctly signed and if it is correctly signed it is going to go ahead and just log us in as uh, that user that Facebook is telling us that we are and the way we do that is by verifying that signature um, because the only two people that have our app secret once again uh, this secret is me and Facebook those are the only two people that have it uh, I'm gonna set some breakpoints for when this is complete uh, or actually we have two possible errors that could happen and then we have uh, on success Facebook dot on local login response which is right here so another handler I'm gonna set another breakpoint but first of all what I'm gonna show you this this Ajax post what it's gonna do We'll go ahead and run it. Okay, we're there. So what just happened is we went to Facebook login. That maps to auth controller Facebook login. This is a little bit tricky, this code, but hang with me. First thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, get the signed request just um, from request utils. So we just basically got you the, you know, this was just passed in as a parameter. It's called signed request. And we're going to call verify Facebook signature. Uh, and we're going to pass in, this is what this uh, client sent to us, and this is our app secret. I'm going to go into verify Facebook signature just really briefly. Um, that's this. If you don't want to understand this, just skip past it. It kind of has to do with uh, public key encryption. So if you're not really into that stuff, you can just say, this is just a magic function, and it'll just do its thing. Uh, you don't need to understand it, and that's okay. Okay. So the signed data has three parameters that we really care about. It has a code parameter, uh, and it has a user ID parameter, and it has a time uh, or issued at parameter. Okay, three parameters, uh, and we need all three of these. Now the first one we're going to do is we're going to say issued at, and what that is is it's a timestamp. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this is not an old timestamp. We don't want an old uh, timestamp uh, because if this was generated a week ago, that could be you know someone was sniffing traffic and they saw someone else log in and they sniffed uh, this uh, signed request and then they tried to do a replay attack. Um, we are not going to allow them to do that. So if it's old, if it's older than 24 hours, then um, we reject it. We say it's expired. Now you're saying. Well, well, what if somebody gets it and tries to use it within 24 hours, right? That's where this nonce table that came in that I told you guys about. I'm going to take the code that they sent us, which is guaranteed to be unique for every uh, every uh, little packet or whatever you want to call it that uh, Facebook sent us. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to save the code. We are going to um, set the created date to just right now, and we're going to save that. And then I'm using a side effect of the database. This is a little bit tricky. Inside the database, on this table, I set a unique key on the code column. What that means is that if the duplicate code is ever attempted to be inserted, then this will throw an error when I try to save it. It'll throw an error saying uh, that the code is not unique. So this is kind of a clever trick, and what I'm doing is I'm inserting the nonce, uh, I'm inserting this code into our database telling our system don't ever use this code again. Don't ever allow this code again. I'm just doing it once, and I'm using the database's uh, unique key capability to throw an error. And if it throws an error, what that's telling me is that that signed request has already been used. Um, so it's a little trick there. And then the next line, what I'm doing is I'm saying delete old nonces. Let's go look at that function. Uh, this is actually just running just a raw uh, SQL query. Maybe a little sloppy, but it gets the job done. I'm saying delete from nonce where the created date is less than 24 hours ago. So you should have a little light bulb that should be coming on right now, I should say, because that's how these two play together. The problem is this nonce table could grow huge. It could grow just gigantic. And what would happen is every time anybody touches a page, in, anything happens in your app, you could get one of these calls and you could be doing an insert into this nonce table and your nonce table could grow to like millions and millions of records. Uh, you're keeping track of all these nonces from you know the beginning of when your app went and you're checking to make sure that they never get reused again. 
that would be super inefficient. So what we do is we only keep 24 hours worth of them, and then if it's older than 24 hours, then we just say, hey, it's older than 24 hours. We don't even need to check whether it's in the table. We don't even care. So we save 24 hours worth of nonces. What all this stuff does is it makes it so that that Facebook signed request that they sent can never be used twice in this app. So this is pretty solid security here. Um, and in fact, even the Facebook examples that I saw didn't really show you how to do this. I would bet you there's a lot of people out there that are susceptible to replay attacks because they don't take this precaution. So this is good stuff. Um, if you can take the time to understand it, uh, you won't regret it. Now you'll notice I have a to-do. Remove this line and schedule it as a, as a task itself. Delete it. Yeah, see this is a waste uh, right here. We don't need to call this query. We don't need to be cleaning up our nonce table every time somebody logs in. That's a waste. But uh, you know what you need to do is create like some kind of a scheduled task, like a cron job, and just run this like once an hour or once a day or whatever. It doesn't really matter. I mean, uh, if this thing builds up a little bit, the only thing that happens is that this insert check is a little slower. Uh, you just want to keep it clean. You just never want to delete more than 24 hours worth of data in there. The reason why we're so nutty about this is because Facebook is just basically saying, hey, here's user uh, Jason, log him in. And we have to trust that uh, A, came from Facebook, and then B, isn't some kind of a replay attack. Uh, you know, there, this is somebody authenticating into our system, which could, you know, could have important data in it. We don't want anybody to be able to hack into our system. So it's a bit of work to make that, you know, ironclad secure. But if we get to this point, basically what we're saying is that whatever is in that signed data, we're going to trust it and we're just going to go ahead and log the user in as that because Facebook told us to, even though we have no password from them or anything. Uh, so at this point now we're going to log them in. What we're going to do first is we're going to uh, create a user criteria and we're going to look for uh, somebody in the user table that has the Facebook ID equal to the ID that Facebook gave us. And we're going to use this thing called get by criteria, which you may not have seen before. What this is is you supply a criteria, but it only expects to have one object returned. Uh, and if this uh, finds an object with this criteria, it's just going to return it as user. What that means is that this user is already in our database. We've already seen them before. So in that case, uh, they're already there. Uh, that's cool. Um, we just uh, set our result up to is new equals, uh, we're checking to see if the username equals blank, which it should. So we're basically saying um, this is not a new user, this is an existing user. And if the exception is caught, notice a not found exception, that's what this throws. Uh, that means no user was found, that means this person isn't in our database. Okay, so we're going to create a new user, set their Facebook ID, set the time zone to zero for now because we don't know the time zone. And we're going to call save. Uh, now we're going to uh, say this user is new. Uh, this very important line right here now, so as of this line, this user is logged in. They've either had an existing account in our database already or we just created a new one for them. Either way, we log them in and we basically tell uh, we're going to return a success of true and a message of OK. And then we're going to render that as JSON out. And that's what we're going to look at here in a minute in the debugger. Um, if any error happened, if any of those exceptions got thrown during the verification or whatever, basically it's all surrounded by a try-catch. Whew! All of that just through this Facebook login. And let's go back to the browser. Okay, so, man, this feels like inception, huh? We just uh, went in and we're coming back out. Uh, we were on the server side now. We're back to the client side. Uh, we did a get login status. We made this Ajax call back to our thing. Success, Facebook on login response, and response, uh, we now have uh, the response, there's that thing that came from the server, hey look at that, so cool, uh, is new equals false, because I'm already in there, um, uh, what else we got here, uh, message equals ok, success equals true, and my user ID is 12, so what are we going to do, um, go ahead and uh, we're not new, so we're going to call auth fetch current user. Uh, and that's where we're going to go to auth.js. 
fetch current user, let's set a breakpoint there and run, go to it. Okay, so now we say auth current user, which is a uh, current user model. Uh, let's go ahead and open up one more uh, script, model.extend. I put this in here. Uh, I created a new model that's pretty similar to the user model, but it's called a current user model, and it's missing a lot of fields. It doesn't include the fields that um, I feel like the user doesn't need to see, private things. So it only creates, uh, it's only the sort of public stuff. And I mapped it to API slash current user. And API slash current user is mapped to auth controller read for the get, and it's mapped to update for the put request. So uh, we're back here. We're going to call fetch. Um, so the current user, basically, what we're gonna, what we're telling it is, go back to um, go back to the server and get the rest of the information about this user because essentially all we have right now is um, we only have their uh, ID. We don't know anything about them. We don't know their name or anything. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. We've got uh, success. Uh, the user has been fetched. So now the user, uh, current user object should have all of the properties like the name and all of that stuff. And I'm going to call auth.onLogin. Auth.onLogin is uh, nothing happens here. But what this is, is this is your function for after the user is logged in, here's your chance to do whatever it is that you want to do, whatever it is that your app's going to do. And there it is, we're right there. So now this is the end of... Uh, into the line as far as my code and now this is where your code kicks in so whatever your UI is going to do once somebody logs in you can either um, you know load load up some bit of UI or give them access to something they didn't have access to or whatever the case may be right whoo that was tough that was a tough tutorial for me to uh, explain and it's probably tough for you to learn right before we're done let's look at one little thing hey what is this link here freeze test if we click on it shows up as a Facebook app inside Facebook. Check it out. We've even got our URL freeze test and there we are, there's the app. And I could go over to uh, nonces and I could uh, click on these and even, you know, edit the freeze app in here. So that is it. We have reached the end of this tutorial. And if you have watched this all the way to the end, then I'm super impressed, actually. Send me a tweet saying that uh, I watched the video all the way to the end. And in return, I will, uh, I don't know what I'll do. I'll say hi to you or something. But uh, I'll be impressed. That's for sure. All right, I hope that this is, uh, you know, useful. I hope you're able to create a cool Facebook app with this. Uh, I hope you learned a little bit more about Freeze. And I'll see you in the next video.